And you're just in time for Richard Mwenja exclusive. Yet again, we are meeting here on this platform and it's always a privilege to have you on board. Now today, we're going to discuss a plethora of issues in the world of politics and governance. And who better to help me unpack the conversation of the day other than the think tank and powerhouse himself, former cabinet minister, the first of his name, Kipruto Arab Kirua. Great to have you here, sir. It's my pleasure, always. And sharp as always. Well, we try. We try. <laughs> we try. At least today, I've tried to match up to your standards. Oh, we yeah. Be shut. You are doing very well. Ah. Uh -huh. Yes, and you see, you still got good muscles uh -huh. that can uh, round up your uh, your attire. Uh, that can flex around. Yes. Ah, uh, very well. Asante sana. Thank you. That of the way, let's begin our conversation for the day. And you're following up on the recent development in the world of politics and governance. And particularly, let's narrow down to the declared candidacy of Raila Odinga to go for the AUC uh, chairmanship position. And let's advance that conversation and pick it from where we left. Now, we've seen President Ruto literally assemble a campaign machinery and himself taking the front row seat in making state visits around the region and also making part of the agenda to make sure he rallies support for Raila Odinga. Which begs the question, sir, are we looking at a case whereby finally President Ruto is vindicated and comes out as someone who sticks to the promises? He said he's going to support Raila and is literally walking the talk. Well, it is useful, and I think the president is cognizant of the fact that Raila's candidature should it go through, mm -hmm. because of course it's one year down the road, and many other countries may have their own candidates, uh -huh. will be something useful for Kenya, in the sense that since independence, we've mm -hmm. not held that position. It has once come to East Africa uh, for the last uh, 65 years or so, mm -hmm. and it went to Tanzania, where Ahmed uh, Salim Hamed uh, was the Secretary General. Remember, that's the position that precursor to the position of AU Commission Chair. Mm -hmm. Many people confuse AU Commission Chair and the Chair for Heads of State and Government, mm -hmm. uh, which is the summit uh, where one of them uh, will be chairing. Oh. It has gone to South Africa. Many times it has gone to West Africa. Now it is coming from Central. It has gone to North Africa, and therefore we feel it is not only a privilege, but an opportunity for us to be able to leverage on that position. Remember in the past it used to be ministers of foreign affairs who were contending for that position, but um, from the recent history, it is people almost at the level of prime minister or former heads of state. Uh, and we, we feel if that position comes to us, we should as a country appreciate and not because it is Raila, it is because it's one of us who has had the opportunity and Raila's profile, with or without that position, is still the same. It's still the same. Yeah. Let's uh, talk matters uh, trust and literally uh, uh, putting our confidence on someone to turn our fortunes around. And at some point, Raila uh, asked Kenyans not to literally have much hope in, the, in President Ruto's uh, tenor. But right now we are seeing him bestow his political interest and future at the hands of President Ruto. Does that also mean it is high time as Kenyans and Raila supporters that they too should now trust President Ruto that he can turn around their fortunes? Yeah, the English men, they say, mm -hmm. one swallow does not make a summer. Mm -hmm. The president has to build his credibility mm -hmm. slightly more than what the situation is. Mm -hmm. Because this one event, and it's an event that uh, as many other factors either conspiring mm -hmm. to deprive Raila that position mm -hmm. or conspiring to assist leverage Raila's position mm -hmm. uh, to the position of AU chair. Mm -hmm. But remember, uh, when you break one promise, people will, you'll have to prove to them by making 10 promises that you fulfill. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the president himself has demonstrated that he's, a very, he's an expert in breaking promises. And he is also an expert in making promises that he has not fully considered, uh -huh. weighed in, uh, to realize that uh, are they within the limit of uh, possibility. Because in leadership, uh -huh. the most important thing is under promise over deliver. And even in marketing, even in terms of salesmanship, you under promise over deliver. That is how you make your customers happy. Mm -hmm. But when you have a promise and you under deliver, you create a feeling that customers will not trust to your wares mm -hmm. and will not trust your promises in future. Very well. So the president has to work slightly more uh, hard than is the case today. Very well. Moving on swiftly, uh, some time back, the opposition led by their chief, Raila Odinga, 
had declared a President Ruto to be an illegitimate president. But following their meetup in Uganda with President Yoweri Museveni, Ruto and himself, thereafter he came forth and went to the media and literally considered uh, Ruto and declared him as a legitimate president, perhaps for his seeking his support for the bid. Are we at a point whereby it's sort of the chicken are coming home to roost and they are getting clarity that is as me or that finally they have accepted Ruto as their president? Well, it is usually useful uh, to use because the language you're using now is English. Mm -hmm. If it was in my vernacular, I would be able to give you more appropriate words. Uh -huh. The Englishman says um, that um, uh, a wise man changes his mind, a fool never. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Raila and I, mm -hmm. and many of us who belong to the Azimio, we believe Chebukati pronounced Ruta the president, mm -hmm. and that position was affirmed in a court of law. Mm -hmm. So in terms of legalities, it was fait accompli. But in terms of reality, mm -hmm. uh, you can have a legal position, but you do not have legitimacy. Legitimacy is a product of consensus across the board. So perhaps the president has demonstrated, as he should, mm -hmm. that is a statesman, is not looking at Raila as an uh, as an opponent. Is looking at him as somebody who uh, can also play another role in terms of building the national cohesion that is desirable for a country as young as Kenya in terms of democratic uh, space. Uh -huh. Very well. For some uh, quarters and some sections of uh, opposition and even some in Kenya Kwanzaa, they believe that probably. This AU bid is the last one for Raila in the world of politics and governance, and that should they fail to clinch it, then even the huge organic uh, audience he has always had and following is likely to en encounter some mass exodus. Do you believe that this could be the last nail on the coffin of Raila Odinga in the world of politics should he fail to clinch this seat? Richard, mm -hmm. I'm not a political philosopher, mm -hmm. but I hold certain principles in politics mm -hmm. that you can only write an obituary of a politician when you are standing on his grave. As long as somebody is still alive, <laughs> as long as somebody is still breathing, uh -huh. anything can happen. Mm -hmm. Who knew President Kibaki would be somebody who would garner 66% mm -hmm. in 2002, given the fact that two years earlier, there were some opinion polls that were taken, even by the community of Kenyans abroad, and Kibaki never ranked among the first five. Who knew? that uh, Abdullahi Wade of Senegal, mm -hmm. having tried to run for presidency for 35 years, would be able to be the president when he was 80, and yet he had lost almost consecutively um, five general elections. Mm -hmm. So in politics, anything is possible. Mm -hmm. Don't write anybody off until the day he no longer breathes. Mm -hmm. That's the only time you can say, yes, this is the final of the finals for so and so the cadets because, are finally, finally yes contact. because you see raila may decide mm -hmm. even if he was to get the au position uh -huh. to resign two years down the road and come and run mm -hmm. for the president mm -hmm. it is not that once you get into that position you are locked in a in a closet mm -hmm. and therefore you cannot come out of it mm -hmm. raila may fail to clean that particular position and if he fails he has said is not going to retire. These are not my words. Uh -huh. He himself has said is not going. He has not retired from politics, uh -huh. which means he's still a politician uh -huh. who can also make decisions uh -huh. according to his wishes or according to the preferences that he has. He has at that particular time, and he has demonstrated in the past that Raila himself is selfless. Uh -huh. Remember the Kibaki Tosha. We had been consulting for such a long period, and that evening, personally, I did not know that he was going to declare because we are still courting the possibility of uh, the late Simon Nyachai joining us for purposes of strengthening the opposition and having a clinch at the victory against Sikanu in the year 2002. Very well. As a seasoned politician and governance expert, much as uh, Ray Lodinga now has the support of the president and other uh, few partners in, in his case to clinch the AU bid, what do you think is the missing element or another additional item that he, they, they should inculcate in their campaign so that chances of him missing on it are very narrow? Um, my, my honest opinion mm -hmm. is that um, if he gets the support of the region, East Africa, uh -huh. 
and is also able to leverage in Central Africa because we have some commonalities mm -hmm. because the countries that don't interact with us directly, they interact with Tanzania under the SADC. And we're also able to leverage on the own of Africa under IGAD, mm -hmm. which will now take us all the way to Sudan and all the way to Eritrea and Somalia. We'll have co constituted a strong block and because it has not been in this region for quite some time, the last time it was on this, the English speaking, is when uh, uh, Madame Zuma of South Africa was the chair of AU Commission. So in my own considered view, we need to talk less and we act more. Uh -huh. we, we talk less in the sense that uh, we should not be making careless comments, in, including infusing the name of uh, uh, the former president of Tanganyi, Tanzania, Jakaya Kikwete, and other names that uh, really are not properly considered. Because in diplomacy, anything you say can be multiplied. Sure. That's the essence of diplomacy. In diplomacy, say less, and whatever you say, or, uh, think about it, let it be well considered thought before you make a pronouncement. That is the essence of diplomacy. Well, they have had it. That point by none other than former cabinet minister himself, Kipruto Arab Kiro, takes us to the wrap of this conversation today, talking matters the political future of none other than Azimi, your leader, Raila Odinga, and also the recent support that he has got from President Ruto and what the AU bid means for him and also for the country at large. This has been the conversation. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's always a privilege to have you on board. We wait to see you on the next edition. I'm Richard Mwanja. Always a pleasure. <laughs>